We are starting tonight with an exclusive report, an exclusive report about politics and retaliation. And a politician who is supposed to be a rising star in the Republican Party, apparently running on fear, fear of exposure. It starts with the issue of illegal immigration. As you can tell by the sheer volume of anti-immigrant politicking in the country right now, the illegal immigration problem must really be exploding. That is true if by exploding you mean that it is down 67%. The Pew Hispanic Center, which is widely considered to be the most authoritative source of numbers on this subject, they've released a new report saying that in the past decade the number of illegal immigrants crossing into the United States has dropped by two-thirds. So the sudden uptick in yelling about illegal immigration, blaming immigrants for everything from Obama being elected to swine flu to kidnapping the Lindbergh baby, uh, that is not happening because illegal immigration is getting worse. It is actually getting better. The uptick in anti-immigration stuff is not really about immigration at all. It is about what makes good politics for anti-immigration politicians. And it is about what makes big profits, apparently, for some very well-connected people. We are bringing Arizona back. The comeback has started, and in November we will complete the mission that we are on. Jan Brewer is a fighter, and the people of Arizona are not quitters, and together we will make a difference. Jan Brewer is a fighter. That, of course, was Arizona's Republican governor, Jan Brewer, uh, speaking in the third person there, um, while, while attempting to secure four more years as Arizona's governor. Jen Brewer is now very much a household name in American politics, mainly due to this moment, the moment when she put her signature, put pen to paper to sign Arizona's draconian papers, please, immigration legislation. But SB 1070 hasn't just attracted national scrutiny for this previously little known governor. It has also attracted lots of questions in Arizona. Last month, you may recall, we told you about some great reporting from the local CBS affiliate, KPHO, in Phoenix, Arizona. KPHO revealed that two of Governor Brewer's advisors, Paul Sensiman and Chuck Coughlin, have extensive ties to a private prison company called the Corrections Corporation of America, CCA. CCA conveniently holds the federal contract to lock up illegal immigrants in Arizona. And SB 1070 being signed into law ultimately means more locked up illegal immigrants and potentially more business for CCA. Handy. Here's what happened when KPHO investigative reporter Morgan Lowe attempted to ask Governor Jan Brewer about that apparent conflict of interest. Did Paul Sensenman or Chuck Coughlin have any input with you on signing SB 1070 into law? Okay, we're done. I mean, are you aware that they are they were lobbyists for Corrections Corporation yeah, of America? Go. Sorry, sorry, Morgan. Governor, don't you think you should have disclosed that? The governor did not answer those questions. Governor Brewer's office later denied any wrongdoing, but KPH, KPHO has kept asking questions. Most recently, they've been tracing the money that this private prison company, CCA, has been lavishing on other Jan Brewer causes. All of the digging that KPHO has been doing on this, all of the questions they've been raising about Governor Brewer's connections to CCA, connections between SB 1070 and the private prison industry, all of the CCA money that they have been tracing, in the end, it has resulted in this. After we began reporting on the connection between Governor Brewer's advisors and CCA, Chuck Coughlin's company canceled all of the governor's campaign advertising on CBS 5. The Brewer campaign decided to cease advertising on the station that has been investigating the governor and her extensive ties to the private prison industry that stands to profit from SB 1070, the landmark anti-immigration law. Phoenix is the biggest city in the state of Arizona. Governor Brewer is up for re-election in November, and her campaign has decided to not advertise on the CBS affiliate in the largest city in the state. A network that has been doggedly investigating her connections to the private prison industry for months now. Now again, KPHO is a CBS affiliate. We here at MSNBC and our connections to NBC, we have absolutely no stake in their financial future whatsoever. In fact, on the contrary. But regardless, this is not about which station is whose. This is not about which network is which. This is about political retaliation against journalism. This is news. 
We called the folks who run Governor Brewer's campaign tonight. Her campaign is run by a company called High Ground Public Affairs, which also, as luck would have it, lobbies for the Corrections Corporation of America. We spoke with Jan Brewer's campaign manager, Chuck Coughlin, one of Governor Brewer's advisors who KPHO has been investigating of late. And Mr. Coughlin told us tonight explicitly that the Brewer campaign had advertised with KPHO in the past, but they decided to stop doing so as a result of the, quote, credibility of the journalism on that network. Asked if that was a reference to the investigative journalism that has been done on that network about Jan Brewer, Mr. Coughlin acknowledged that it was. To be clear, Jan Brewer's campaign informed us in no uncertain terms that they advertise on the other two networks in Phoenix, but they decided to stop advertising on the CBS station because of them investigating Governor Brewer. That comes directly from Governor Brewer's campaign. Asked specifically if Governor Brewer herself was involved in that decision, in the decision to stop advertising on KPHO as retaliation for their investigations into the governor, her campaign manager told us that Ms. Brewer is clued into everything they do there. He told us, quote, absolutely, it's her campaign. In addition to ending its advertisements on KPHO in retaliation for that company's journalism, the company that runs Governor Brewer's campaign also directed us to a blog post on the High Ground website, a blog post that specifically targets KPHO's investigative reporter, Morgan Lowe. It refers to him as, quote, maniacal, and the entry attacks the network's reporting on Governor Brewer. When we spoke with High Ground tonight, they accused the network of intentionally misleading its viewers. They accused KPHO of misleading its viewers. This is, this is a big development in this story and in the understanding of Arizona Governor Brand, Jan Brewer. The governor of Arizona, Jan Brewer, is now retaliating against a television network that is investigating her ties to one of that state's biggest industries, an industry that stands to profit from the anti-immigration law that has made her nationally famous. Joining us now is Morgan Lowe, investigative reporter for KPHO-TV in Phoenix. Mr. Lowe, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Hello, Rachel. Let me ask you first if I've misstated any of that or if any of that conflicts with your understanding of the situation. That sounds about right from what I heard. Okay. What can you tell us about the Brewer campaign's decision to stop advertising on, on your station? Luckily, I'm sort of shielded from the advertising area of our TV station. I have uh, the luck to work for a general manager who takes care of all that. I, I can tell you that I was informed of that decision about two weeks ago, about a week before the primary, that uh, people from high ground had called Channel 5, said they were no longer going to advertise. They didn't give us a reason why, but it came after some of our reporting about the governor's connection to the private prison industry. Given that you have said on the air that um, around the time of your investigations and following your investigations, the Brewer campaign had pulled its advertising from your station, have to ask your reaction tonight. We were very surprised that the Brewer campaign admitted to us flat out that they stopped advertising on your station because of your work. They are admitting to it. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to think about that. The, I'm, you know, as a reporter, I try to stay out of the business end of it. Again, I'm, I'm lucky to work at a place where I've, I'm kept out of that decision. I can tell you that my bosses have never told me to stop investigating this connection, uh, and I haven't been keyed in on the finances behind this. But I can also tell you that there are very, various uh, FCC regulations that make our books open to people so they can come by and see just how much money this cost. I haven't looked at those books. I'm just, uh, you know, we're continuing to ask these questions, and the questions that we're asking still have not been answered. You know, I should mention, as an employee of MSNBC, we also are totally insulated from the advertising decisions that are made on this network, as it should be. They shouldn't be able to affect the editorial. Nobody should be able to affect the editorial content of a show by either giving or, or, or revoking advertising money. That's part of the, the idea of a free press. But as I mentioned, Morgan, the media company that runs the Brewer campaign hasn't just arranged for all that, those advertising dollars to be taken away from your employer. They've also written this really vitriolic um, blog entry, essentially, attacking you personally, attacking your reporting. They argue that you are intentionally misleading viewers, interviewing people who are biased against this private prison company. What's your response to those accusations? 
I, I read that blog, and I, my first reaction was, if Mr. Coughlin knew me better, he'd probably have worse things to say about me. But uh, the fact of the matter is we've been pretty consistent throughout in asking him and letting him know exactly what we want to know. And that blog entry that he released today is pretty consistent with the types of emails I've received from him over the last three weeks. Mr. Coughlin, Chuck Coughlin doubles as Governor Brewer's campaign manager and the head of a company that lobbies for CCA. Um, have you ever had any luck asking him about that apparent conflict of interest? We sent email after email being explicit. There's really one issue we want to know here is what did he tell the governor about what his client, CCA, may gain from the signing of SB 1070? Did he tell her anything about that? CCA has been pretty, um, all along, they've said that they did not lobby the governor for this. But we have not heard that from Chuck Coughlin. All we've heard from him over and over again is that illegal immigrants picked up off the street in Phoenix on local charges will never end up in a CCA ICE run facility. And we've done uh, Freedom of Information Act requests from ICE. We've spoken to the folks at ICE. We hear our Sheriff Joe Arpaio here on the air all the time talking about the 30,000 illegal immigrants that were picked up locally that he's turned over to ICE. So the statements he've made, he's made really have not rung true. Morgan Lowe, investigative reporter for KPHO-TV in Phoenix, uh, whose station is, is paying the price for that, but standing up for your reporting and doing so. Thanks for your time tonight. Keep it up and good luck. You're welcome, Rachel.